I like to show you a test that tells you if a language is regular or not. And of course, in this, this example is a language given by a regular expression and therefore it must be a regular language. But uh, that's not my point and I choose those language to better show you how this works and I found this easier to look through than if I would have taken a description of the words that are in the language. So, first uh, we want to have a look at some of the words. And, well, if you have a close look at the regular expression, it tells you that in this language are words that have exactly two A's. And you can have um, any number of B's between or before or after them. But uh, the main thing is that they have exactly two A's and not more or not, and not less. So, let's think about some words. Let's begin with the empty string. And the question is, is the empty string in the language? And the answer is no, because in the language there are words that have exactly two A's and the empty string doesn't have any. So, now I want to append any string and I want uh, so that I get a word that's in the language. So, what do I have to append to the en empty string? Well, I could append two A's and then I would have a word in the language. Or I could append two A's and a B. Or I could append, I could first append a B and then two A's. Or I could append a word that's made up of, or a string that's made up of two B's and two A's. Or anything else. And if I would sum it up, I would have to append anything from this set. So I would have to append anything from B star, A, B star, A, B star. So this word is not in the language. I would have to append any from this strings to get a word that's in the language. So let's take another word. Let's take B. And B is not in the language as well, because B doesn't include two A's. And also to that B I would have to append two A's, or I could append two A's and another B, or I could append one B and then the two A's, or I could append anything else from here. And the same is of course if I had two B's, because Two B's still are not in the language and I would have to append any word with two A's to get a word that's in the language. And if I would sum this up, I these are words from the set B star. So let's think about another word. Let's, let's take the word A. And A is of course still not in the language because it contains one A and in the language there are words that contain two A's. And what I have to append to get a word in the language is I have to append one A. Or I could append a B and an A. Or I could append, well, I could first append an A and then a B. Or I could append one A and two Bs. And if I would sum this up, I would have to append any word that contains, well, it could contain any B, but that contains any A somewhere. And then, again, as many Bs as I want, because in this case only A's count or are important. So let's take another word. Let's take, for example, B, A. And that is another word that includes one A and it's not in the language because it has still one A to less. And I would have to append one A or I could append any number of Bs as long as I append one single A to this word to get my two Bs. And if I would sum these words up, I this, that would be any word from B star A. B star. So if I have any word that contains one I, 
A, I have to append any word that contains another A to get a word from the language. So let's take some other word, let's take two A's. And now this word is in the language because it, uh, it contains exactly two A's. But I can still append a string so that the word stays in the language. So I could append um, nothing, I could append the empty string. Or I could append a single B. Or I could append two Bs to the A and uh, the word would still be in the language I gave above. Or I could append three Bs. And again, when I sum it up, I could append any any number of b so that the that this word would stay in the language. So, and the same is, of course, true if I have a word maybe a a b, or if I have a word named b a a, or anything that uh, well, if I have any word from the set B star A B star A B star so if I have if I have any word that's that is part of the language I can still append any number of B that I like to and would still have a word in the language so let's look at another case what if I have a word that contains three A's. Well, the word with three A's is not in the language because in this language there are only words with exactly two A's and three words have, three A's have one A too much and it's, it's not possible to append anything to get a word in the language and what we what we say, what we append to this to get a word in the language, well it's, it's not possible so we write the empty set it's not possible to append anything that we get a word in the language. And the same is of course true for a word with well with four A's or with with a B in it or something. And uh, when I when I try to when I construct an automaton to this language, let me do this. First I have the the start state where I can where I can read any number of B's that I want. Then I read one A. Then I can again read any B any number of B's. And then I want to read a second A. And then I can read again any number of B's. And now this would be my final state, because in this case I would have read the two A's that I needed. And if I read anything more, or another A, I would come to those traps so that I can um, never leave again. And where it doesn't matter if I read A's or B's. And um, if you have a close look at this, you will see that, um, well, this, in this case here where we already saw three A's and we can't get back to the language anymore, that's the same as those, that's the same case as in the strap state where we already saw the three A's. And in this case where I have a word in the language but I can still read any number of B's, that's the same as my final state here. And so the other um, cases I have here, so th this set where I saw a word with one A in it, that's the same, that corresponds to this state where I read one A. And, and of course this case where I didn't read anything or maybe I read any B's, it's the same as this state. And that is um that is what the that's what the theorem of my Hill Nirod says. And this ones here are called equivalent classes. 
where the table would look something like this. And I could name the same according to the equivalent classes. So this is the case where I read epsilon. This is the case where I, or the class where I read a single A. This is where I read two A's. And this corresponds to the class where I read three A's. So, and we can do a little bit more with it. For example, if you have another language, let me uh, well, let me scroll down a little bit. If you have another language that is not regular, for example, if you have, let me take the language a to the power of n, b to the power of n, and let n be greater or equal zero. Now, if we want to draw the same table as above, well, let me consider that i is a number that gives me the number of a, so let me let me call this i to the a to the power of i. So let me let me just consider or suggest that um, that the number of a's is given to give you the, this example. When I have a word where I didn't read have any a, so this would be the empty string, and I would want to append anything to get a word in the language, I would have to, well, I could append nothing but epsilon. If I have a word where I know I have one a, then I would ha need the same number of a's, of b's to get a word in the language, so I would have to I would have to append a single b, and if I would had a word with two a's, I would have to append nothing but two b's. And as you, um, if you would go on with it, you would ne it would never terminate because um, the more a's you have, the more b's you would have to append. So the so table would be infinite long, and therefore you couldn't. Um, you couldn't draw um, a deterministic automaton for those language. So, and what the uh, well, what the what the theorem of Michael Neroth says is that the exact number of those equivalent classes corresponds to the number of the minimal deterministic automaton, and therefore you can say that that one case corresponds to one um, state in the automaton. And with this, well, with this you could prove that a language is regular and you could also prove that a language is not regular with the theorem of my Hill Neurot.